Okay, then I think we should start now. So, I'm Bartek, nice to meet you all. Uh, besides being a Scala software engineer and working for a consultancy company called Software Mill, I also enjoy reading a good book, probably as some of you. And from time to time, I like to dive deeper into topics related to the mathematics. And it is one of the reasons why we're all here today. I would like to tell you about one of these peculiar mathematical curiosities that can actually impact our life as software engineers. But before we start, let's move to describing uh, levels on which math and software intersect with one another. First, we've got level zero or tier zero, so binary system. All zeros, ones, and all the algebra related to this, all the equations related to electrical engineering, which basically make our software runnable at all by providing hardware. Then we've got algorithms and data structures, and as you probably know, most of them have at least some fundamentals behind them from mathematics. It is especially visible in case of graph-based algorithms, uh, which, as you probably know, originates from mathematics as a science, not from computer science. And then on the architecture level, we've got, for example, things like CAP theorem. I know that we can spend probably an hour or so here talking whether it works, whether it worked any time before, uh, but in my opinion, it still describes some basic trade-offs we have to make while designing a distributed system. And that is quite a nice example for this talk. Additionally, what you probably not know about the CAP theorem, it is that it is a fully proven mathematical theorem with all the required mathematical paperwork around it. So formal mathematical proof. And as a cherry on top, we've got monads, functor, applicative, applicative functor, semi-monoid, semi-groups, and other category theory stuff that we probably not fully understand, yet we are happily using it in our daily life as software engineers. Because why shouldn't we? Before we move forward, I have one more question to you, people. What do you think will be the value of B? If you read the description of my talk, that probably it is a first, fairly simple question. If no, then pl please, no cheating now, no reading the description of the talk, just try to answer the question the best as you can. So, the value will be true. Who thinks that way? Hands up. Okay. Who thinks the value will be false? Nobody? So you read the description. Okay, I'm surprised. And of course, the correct value is true. But why? Why calling all match on empty stream will always return true? And what it have to do with math? Well, it has quite to do, uh, to do with math because the reason behind all of this is a concept called vacuous true which is a concept from branch of mathematics known as logic that is used to describe all the logical statements that are evaluated as true because their base condition or undescendant in more formal terms cannot be fulfilled. Or in more mathematical syntax, assume that we have a logical statement S, if P, then Q. Then, if P is false, S is considered logically true, and is considered vacuous true. As for the value of Q, it doesn't matter because we do not even attempt to evaluate the logical value of Q. We can also define this concept with the use of for all quantificator, this strange reverse A. You probably know it from your mathematical lectures on your studies. In such case, we read it as for all the elements of a set B, if Px, then Qx. Additionally, if Px is false for all the x's, 
then our statement is also considered vacuous truth and is evaluated as logical truth. I know that it sounds crazy on the first start, so let's try to make it more descriptive with an example. Let's consider such a logical statement. If there are any developers in the room next door, then they all work with Haskell. I know it is probably not the best example for emptiness on a programming conference because I bet then in any room next to us there will be always some developers and I bet that they won't be working all in Haskell, but nevertheless, it is just an example. So here we have a base condition that states that there must be some developers in the room next door. This base condition is explicitly stated inside our statement. We can also have implicit base condition, for example, in statement, mobile phones in the room next door aren't turned off. And in both cases, if a room is empty, the statement is evaluated as logically true and is considered vacuous truth. OK, now let's try to mix a little and mix this developer with mathematical syntax. PX is our explicit base condition so that there are any developers in the room next door. QX is our then close, so they all work in Haskell. And B is our set, so all the people in the room. And we can read the definition of vacuous truth in form of for all the people in a room, if a person is a developer, then they must work in Haskell. I hope that now, now it sounds more reasonable for all of you. Let's see. But I'm drifting from the topic, let's say, because I'm speaking about some um, abstract things like logic, mathematics, uh, Haskell developers, like how many of you even know somebody who writes Haskell? Because I know one person. Okay, so you, you know somebody. Okay, didn't expect it that much. So stream and all match just perfectly fits into vacuous truth definition with the for all quantificator. And we can read it as for all the elements of our stream B, if a predicate P is valid, then return true. And because, as in the old previous example, our stream is empty, so there are no developers to, to, to check, uh, our predicate returns true. And here is a beautiful screenshot from IntelliJ IDEA that proves that computers can into maths and that we can just replace this whole expression with true because it will always return true. I check it today, it works still that way. Maybe they, they change it, but you can go and try yourself. I encourage you. Of course, some of you may say that it's only in Java. Uh, it is just a coincidence. It's just implementation details of Java and streams. Well, maybe it is, maybe it is not. I believe that it is not. And Java is not the only language with such a behavior. For example, in Scala, method for all, which is present in many collection interfaces, also return true for empty sequences. In JavaScript, method ever from RI prototype also return true for empty arrays. But what exactly is an array in JavaScript is quite a different question. In Python and Kotlin, building method all, which tests if all the elements of an array are true, will also return true for empty arrays. Additionally, some time ago, I have a pleasure to speak with people from Neo4j, and via manual testing, we came to the conclusion that building method all, which is included into Neo4j, also return true for empty arrays. 
So when hell freezes, math will be actually useful in our daily life. So vacuous truths daily. Besides when the hell freezes, which I already used, we have when pigs learn to fly, when shrimps learn to whistle, or when the stars, sun starts rising in the west. And basically all other absurdities that are based on obviously false or impossible to meet condition. Additionally, uh, these are only the example which I, not native English-speaking person was able to find uh, with the help of Google. And if you are more proficient than me in English, you will probably find some more example of such a word. And what's more again, I bet, which is just a bet, but very educate, educated one, that all languages have such uh, sentences built, built in by default and we probably use them more often than not and for sure more often than we expect. So the hell just frozen and math became useful in our daily life in a very roundabout way, but still. And as the time is running up, there is a time for a recap. Just remember that vacuous truth exists. It is the concept from branch of mathematics known as the logic, is used to describe all the logical statements that are evaluated as true because their base condition cannot be fulfilled or is, true, or is false, is the reason why all match and their counterparts will return true for empty sequences. And additionally, as you can see a moment ago, can sometimes occur in our real life. So if you like my talk and want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, you can find me on LinkedIn mostly, on Medium and Twitter under this handle, and on Software Muse blog when I try my skills as a writer. If you have any questions, now it is a perfect time. We've got two minutes, so any questions? OK, I see no questions, then Thank you all for your attention, have a great day, and have a great, re great rest of the conference, because we are just started. <laughs>